So Danny, first of all, I was surprised. I thought I thought they would go defense, Danny, with the pick because the defensive coach, coaches have can pound the table and kind of get usually, you know, they make two to three times what a coach does. But Ryan Poles has so much steam now, so much momentum. Eberflus doesn't. So my take by getting Roma Dunze, that's a Ryan Poles call. That's my take, yours. 100%. When Ryan Poles was here, when he got hired, people were asking him about team building philosophy. And he said, remember where I came from. And that's Kansas City. Because he got criticism for his first draft where he didn't have a first round pick, taking Kyler Gordon and Jaquan Brisker with his two second round picks. And I criticized them for not taking a receiver in George Pickens with the Jaquan Brisker pick. And he said, remember where I came from, which he was basically saying, I didn't think anyone there was the right guy to take, but I'm not going to not support the quarterback. He traded for Claypool. It didn't work. He trades the number one pick. He wants DJ Moore attached to it. It does work. He trades a fourth round pick for Keenan Allen. He's one of the most consistent players in the NFL. And then the ninth pick overall comes up and he makes what I thought was the obvious pick if he was on the board and he gives Joe Burrow his Jamar Chase. You know, uh, these guys have a rookie contract timeline that are completely aligned. I know Burrow and Chase were in back to back drafts, but the idea is the same to get Caleb Williams a weapon that he can grow and develop with. I'm ecstatic. This is modern offensive football finally coming to Chicago for the first time in my lifetime. Pretty nuts. Well, that's, you know, John and I were talking about this. When is the last rookie quarterback <laughs> that got this? This is insane. Gerald Everett's a throw in. He was the Chargers best tight end. Highly productive. Well, we've never seen it for a number one overall pick quarterback. We've definitely never seen it for that. Uh, Justin Herbert had a very good situation in L.A. with Keenan Allen and Mike Williams. And, you know, he was supported with Austin Eckler and Corey Lindsley at center and Rashawn Slater at tackle. And he set the rookie record for passing touchdowns with 31. Uh, so we have never seen it for a number one overall pick to have this type of nest to come into and develop. And if I may for a second, because Colin, you and I had talked about this on the show about like how Chicago is a place where they've never had offensive success and quarterbacking goes to die Crazy. and all of that stuff. And that cynicism that bears fans is well earned the amount of luck that led to this moment is just staggering. Week 18, two years ago, the Bears needed the Texans to beat the Colts. And Davis Mills led a 14-play drive where he converted a 4th and 10 and a 4th and 20 on the same drive and then a two-point conversion to give them the number one pick in the Bryce Young draft. They then trade the number one pick to the Panthers the Panthers then have to be so bad and they lost four of those games by only three points to give them the number one pick to be in this position to get Caleb Williams. So the stars are finally aligning in Chicago to be set up at quarterback and have a good offense and potentially a great offense for literally the first time in my lifetime with any consistency. So Minnesota trades up 23 to 17. Jacksonville slides back. Minnesota selects Dallas Turner. So uh, 10 minutes ago, John and I sort of guessed. We predicted we would go on a defensive run here. So since uh, Latu Latu goes to Indy, Byron Murphy, the small but explosive defensive tackle, a longhorn goes to Seattle. It's a real need. Minnesota smartly moves up. So, you know, Minnesota um, moved up just a little to get JJ McCarthy. Boy, this division's got this division's got good personnel. This, this division is freaking ridiculous. I'm I'm sure you could do a Pro Bowl, offensive Pro Bowl with the NFC North that could beat the league. I seriously well, believe Dan that. I, Danny, that's my I mean you have the best that's my know. thing with the Bears. What? I mean we're all in love. I mean how could you not be what they've done? It's not the Packers. We know if that quarterback keeps playing, they're going to be good. You'd assume their defense can't be as shitty as it's been. And the Lions honestly should have beat the 49ers, should have been the Super Bowl. So it's you could have an excellent, improved team and still be the third best team in that division. They could be very rarely. I mean, it could it could be a 10 win team gets third place in this division. It could be it could be three playoff you teams that that come out of the north. Honestly, I 
I think Minnesota and Chicago will battle for a wild card spot. I think Detroit still has the best roster. I think Green Bay's is young, not as good as Detroit's, but it's it's pretty damn interesting offensively. I the Packers defense never delivers. I couldn't say the last year I thought great defense. It just doesn't. The Aaron Rodgers year it was pretty good, but they Green Bay does offense better than anybody. They can't get the defense, right? Even though they draft it in the first round historically almost every year. So Dallas Turner you know, I, do you know that what I wonder with Poles? So since, since it, and I, I wonder if Poles may what? say this tonight in his press conference because you hit on the Claypool situation. I mean, they missed badly on character. And like you said, he came from around Ballard and Andy. I mean, they value character pretty high with their high-end guys. I wonder if they would have taken Rome over neighbors. Like Rome was the second wide receiver on their board. It, it wouldn't shock me with that at all because his character, from what I was told, is elite. Yeah, Brock Heward told me that he's uh, one of the two favorite players that he's seen at Washington in being about around the program in about 20 years. And you know what's crazy, too? They they kind of telegraphed it, not the Bears, but Caleb. Like, it came out the other day that Tom Pelissero had it, that Roma Dunze yep. was working out with DJ Moore, Keenan Allen, with Caleb Williams throwing them the ball. Caleb and Rome were on the same flight from L.A. to Detroit for the draft. Caleb put on Instagram a couple hours before the draft, how much he liked Roma Dunze's outfit. So I think it might, I think it might come out because I mean, they've been doing install with Caleb Williams. Like, I mean, this, this has been uh, locked up for eight weeks that Caleb's going to be a bear. I, it wouldn't shock me at all. If Ryan Poles admits that he asked Caleb Williams for input on who he wanted them to take at number nine. And so, yeah, the character part for polls, sure. But it would not surprise me at all if Caleb Williams had at least a say in, in Roma Dunze being a bear. I saw we, I would told this by multiple uh, scouts and GMs in the league, that this is the most talented top of a draft in years. Brock Bowers goes 13 the best run blocking offensive tackle in years goes 14 to the Saints. Byron Murphy goes 16. Dallas Turner, who was considered a top eight pick, goes 17. But the, guys, I, I, for years, Danny, I've always been told by scouts a good draft, you'll have 17 to 18 first round players, and then it's Death Valley. I was told this year it was 19 to 20. Um, God, I, I, I'm amazed. My guess is Cincinnati's next guys. I think they go wide receiver. You got to defend. Oh no, they went and got a Marius Mims. This is the first pick I have real questions with. Not a ton of starts. If I listen, somebody's going to bust in the first eighteen picks. This one scares yeah, me. I mean, multiple guys will bust. I'm multiple throw it out guys there. will bust in the first eighteen picks. I mean, don't you think this is maybe just, it, Joe Burrow needs to be healthy in order for us to be good? Like when Joe yeah, the, Burrow the, the, was, the Bengals love the height, weight, speed guys too. You know, this guy's got eight starts or whatever, a little bit of a fly, you know, I wouldn't say a flyer because it comes from Georgia, but pretty risky, but that's kind of their history. I mean, they, they, they take some risks. I mean, yeah, but when Burrow is healthy, they win for sure. Win big. <laughs> so, so, I mean, I know everybody apparently wants, you know, Hendrickson wants to be traded and uh, T Higgins wants to be traded and guys are getting out of there because you can't pay everybody. But I'll roll the dice with a healthy Joe Burrow and a healthy Jamar Chase. And so if this pick helps keep them upright, that's uh, that's not the worst thing in the world. The run on offensive players was just remarkable. Like we knew I we knew it was going to be the top seven. We we're like, oh, maybe it'll be the top nine. But what it was the top top 14, top right? Top 14 picks. You have to or, wonder if this is going to start being a trend, you know, with the way college football is much more offensive. I mean, Ohio State, a historic program is an offensive program now. Alabama now with Dubois going to be lean more offense. Georgia's probably the what? last of a dying breed. Even Brian Kelly, look at him. Jaden Daniels, Malik Neighbors. I mean, it's just, I wonder if this is just kind of where we're headed hey. as a as a sport. Well, 